You are listening to Look Who's Talking. I am Cameron Minter. I am your co-host and the wonderful Jessica Coffey, yeah. our executive Morning. director. Yeah. That's our host. What's going on, Jessica? I'm the head start director. That's what I was just saying. You just said executive director. Oh. That's Sharon Price. See? Don't get me in no trouble, It, it hasn't been that long. Don't now. do it. I know it, it has. has. Not it has not long. been that long, but it has. It hasn't been that long. <laughs> What's going on, Jessica? Acting brand new. I know. Listen, it's been a while. It like, sure has. We haven't talked about Thanksgiving, Christmas. Yeah, we don't want, I, I'm I'm done with that. I'm, um, I'm over that. Let's let, let's, yeah. not, let's not bring it up. You know what? I, I was sick for both of them. Oh, you were. Yeah, I got uh, COVID right before Thanksgiving, in. and then uh, right before Christmas, I got the flu. <laughs> Crazy. Just wonderful. Well, I still have my Christmas trees up. Two, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of you <laughs> because, you know, you really wanted to put it up in, Listen, uh, what was it, August? Before, no, it was after <laughs> Halloween I wanted to put it up. Yeah, well. Yeah. Since since we really kind of missed the holiday season, yeah. I, I guess that's why ours is still up. So, so, so be it. Yeah, y'all I, just I'm not enjoying it. No, she, she really ready for it to go down. <laughs> She's just waiting Are for me. Are you the person who has to take it down? Well, I'm the person that has to help. Got you. Well, you know, nobody's helping me, so. Right, I know, right? I got to do it by you myself. You got to do it. So just, just get it done. Maybe it'll happen in February, maybe. Right, right, right. Maybe. Well, <laughs> I can't I can't keep looking at it because, you know, I, got, I feel some kind of way. <laughs> I feel some kind of way. What else has been up with you? I feel like it's been so long it's since we It's a new talked. year, so I'm just, I'm just ready for that new. I'm ready for something better. Um, you know, it's, it's that... In your mind, you know, I tell myself we don't have to wait for January 1 to start all over. We can start over today. Amen. So, um, but it's that goal setting, that, that yeah. you know, that 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 time of year where you say, look, I, this is what I wanted to accomplish last year. I didn't uh-huh. make it, so this is what I'm going to get done this year. Right. So do you usually set goals each year? Yes and no. Yes and no. Mm-hmm. Um, but this year I want to set uh Real goals, yeah. you know, write them out, you yeah. know, have something to look at and, and uh, shoot for. Each year I bully my friends into setting, <laughs> like, goals for the Way year. <laughs> like, we have categories oh. and everything. Oh. So, like, January 1st, 2nd, we all discuss them. And then usually when it's that person's birthday, we, like, Check overview in. and say, wow. hey, have you accomplished this? Wow. I get into it. I bet. Yeah. I bet your friends love you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> they they absolutely they love me. Absolutely but I, I absolutely love you. get on their nerves. But I bet. I, I'm a pusher. But like, that's I'm good. Like, I mean, you gotta have that it. one in your yeah. circle. You, yeah. You know? Cause I'm like, um, Let's work on these financial goals because you asked to borrow five dollars from me <laughs> and you have still haven't Wrong. paid that back. So uh, I gotta no. get my sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> you starting already. That's what's going on. But yeah, yeah it's it's that time of year. So uh-huh. um I'm looking forward to this year, you know. I'm looking forward to more and yeah. just uh putting my stake on it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know what my word of the year is? Here we go. Yesterday, I mean, not yesterday. Last year, it mm-hmm. was elevation. We was taking it up a notch. Uh-huh. This year is manifest. <laughs> <laughs> manifest. Manifest. Okay. Manifest. All the positive things we want, manifest. we're manifesting. We we yeah. are accomplishing all of it this year. That sounds like a, a wonderful thing. A wonderful thing. So you set it some is. rigorous goals for yourself, though, right? I did. Because guess what? I'm hard on myself. I know. That's right. Oh Ain't no goodness. other way to be. No yeah, other way to be. So um, there's a thing that happened yesterday. What happened? Um, me and Melissa Tibbs were on Good Day Kentucky. Yeah. Talking about that. the Head Start program. All right. It was exciting. But you know what? When I walked in their studio, I like compared it to ours. See, stop, stop, <laughs> stop it. Don't I did. And I, I said, ooh, that studio is nice, but <laughs> they ain't got nothing on us. Go! Look now, don't get us in no trouble because we're trying to we're trying to make friends all over the world. But what were you on the television for? 
What was you talking about? Oh, we were talking about Head Start being a program of excellence. What? Yes. Yay. That is something to talk about. You isn't know it? what? That was like one of our biggest achievements last year. Absolutely. Um, and it was a lot of work, but you know, to be recognized as um, one of eleven. One of um, eleven that, nationwide. Yeah, out of sixteen hundred. Um, head starts in the country. Yeah. So that was exciting. That's amazing. But you know what? After um, we came from the studio, I have been working on my um, voice, you know. <laughs> yeah, your so, radio voice. Yeah. Okay. And? <laughs> and um, it's harder than what it sounds. <laughs> right. No doubt. You know, because they were, they were asking us questions. and You didn't like you the know, way I you sound. I was like, oh, okay. Then after the cameras went off, they went to their regular voices, and I said, oh, <laughs> hold up. I need to learn this That's skill. like a preacher voice. You know that? Yeah. I've well, been talking yeah. to you like that. Then, then, uh, <laughs> on the other day. No, no. Back to you, Cam. <laughs> well, let's get some motivation in because we got a powerful show today. Okay. I think it's time for a coffee break. <laughs> Okay, so for today's coffee break, what I have to say is every twist and turn in life is an opportunity to learn something new about yourself, your interests, your talents, and how to set then achieve goals. Just remember everyone that no matter good or bad, you can turn that thing around and um, you know, achieve some stuff out of that. You're already in my sermon, girl. Get Every out of my opportunity mix. is an opportunity to learn That's and do better. That's absolutely right. You know, uh, it's funny. I, I don't want to go too, too uh, spiritual on you, but, you know, Joe, he was picked on. Mm -hmm. He was picked out by God mm -hmm. to be picked on. Yeah. That's that's rough. Mm -hmm. But everything he went through made him who he was. Yeah. And so when we go through things, it's not because, you know, the world just wants to pick on us, right? But it's growing us. It's 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 making us who we're uh, equipped to be. Yeah. Through all the trials. And you know what? Every um, I always say this. Every and when my parents used to say, I used to roll my eyes. But mm. um, every uh, what what is it? Every lesson is a learned lesson. That. Yeah, that one. That one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> so there's there's opportunity to to learn from every Absolutely. situation we we in. Absolutely. The best lesson is a learned lesson. There it is. There you got it. That you one. fixed it. You fixed that it. Well, that was a wonderful inspiration. I appreciate it. And that was the coffee break from Jessica Coffee. Jessica, who is in the house today? We got a powerful show. Let me get, yes, get into it. Yes, I am excited, and let's get right into it. We have Dr. Justin J. Miller, um, who is a uh, UK dean of the College of Social Work. Do you want to be called Justin or Jay? Jay is just fine. Thank Jay, you. okay. You got it. Let's Welcome, Jay. It. Welcome well, to thank, the show. We're glad so to have you here. Thank you Yes, sir. I see y'all yes, got a serious situation going on. <laughs> see, you see, uh, she causing problems going to the networks. Don't, don't call see, I, I, I'm not going to argue with it, though. I've seen it in some networks, and in, 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 in you there. You there. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. We are excited to have you on the show. Um, we will be talking about some self-care. Um, yes, you know, yes. that's hard for some of us to do. That's easy for others to do. Um, and I think there's also confusion sometimes because oh, yeah. some people are like, well, my self-care is sitting on the couch. Is that <laughs> really self-care? I guess it's dependent on the person. But tell, we want to know a little bit about you. Tell us how you got into the work that you're in. Yeah. So, um, you know, I have the Distinct privilege, as you mentioned, of serving as the dean of the College of Social Work at the University of Kentucky. Uh, I say it's, it's the best job one could have. Uh, every day I get to go in with uh, great folks and try to make some great change. So, um, you know, my story is a long, complicated one, but to keep it short, I, I always say I am a loud, proud foster care alum. So mm -hmm. I grew up in uh, uh, foster care, kinship care. Um, a lot of times I say, uh, my name is Jay, and I grew up in foster care, and people say, aw. 
I said, what the hell are you on about? Yeah. Uh, foster care is the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm-hmm. Wow. And it's because I know the alternative. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, that really shaped and put me on this road to um, social work. I knew at seven years old that mm-hmm. I wanted to be a, a CPS worker. Yeah. Uh, now I can tell you for sure, no one ever in life at seven has said, I want to be a CPS worker. Mm-hmm. Uh, but because of my own experiences and I'd been through it, I wanted to do it a certain way. Yeah. So um, that that uh, is really, even today, what drives me is wanting to have some impactful change for folks. And uh, the self-care space is just another and a different way to do that. Right. So you said at seven, you knew that you wanted to be a CPS worker. Mm-hmm. Was there someone in your life who impacted that? Well, so, um, you know, I remember it was third grade Miss Pro's class. Uh, I get a call to come down to the office. Now, that wasn't really an abnormal thing. Uh, I was a bad, a bad kid. Come now, on, folks man. will say, now, there's no such thing as a right, bad kid. Right. Yeah, that's some bad this kids. Some of y'all got some bad kids. <laughs> uh, um, but, uh, um, you know, I, I, I remember walking in, and there's this lady standing at this table with this manila folder. And uh, she says, uh, hi, Justin. Now, that right there lets me know you, you don't know me. Like, nobody that knows me calls me Justin. Just, okay. They call me Jay. Um, but we sat down, and, you know, she starts asking all these questions about things happening in my house. Uh-huh. Uh, now, my mother had died when I was younger. My father had some substance misuse uh, issues. And I don't know about y- y'all, but when I grew up, you don't talk about what's happening mm-hmm. inside your house, right. outside your house. That's what's right. up. Right. <laughs> so, um, but I do remember there were so many things I wanted to tell this lady about how scared I was or how I had to take care of my younger sisters or how I didn't know uh, where my father was or when I would see him again. Yeah. Um, and I didn't feel like I had the space to do that. I mm-hmm. didn't feel like that um, she had the time to hear that. Mm-hmm. So... I didn't know what it was at the time, but I knew that I wanted to do what she did. I just wanted to do it a different way. Mm. Gotcha. And so it was really that experience that kind of put me on the path to say, I, 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 I can do that. And having been there, I know that it needs to happen a certain way. Got you. Wow. That's incredible. That's powerful. That's powerful. Thank so you, thank you. right there is where uh, a whole career started. Indeed. And yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it's birthed funny. out of your, your own per- personal oh, yeah. uh, pain. Well, and I think the most important about it is is what keeps you going even now. Mm-hmm. So the days that you're tired and you don't want to look at another thing, that, uh, sometimes you don't want to talk to another person, uh, I reflect back on that. And yeah. it puts me in a space that I uh, kind of keep keep pressing on. Gotcha. So tell us a little bit about the evolution of your career. So, you know, did you start? Where did you start? So, um, I guess I'll, I'll start in the, the CPS space. So, Went to college, graduate college. You know, I, I get there and I say, I want to major in CPS, mm-hmm. right? And I, that's not a thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Uh, but uh, th- that's how committed I was. I was going to major in CPS. Uh, and so I got to the social work space, um, went through, and again, day one out of school, I, I, I had a plan and I was not deviating from that plan. Yeah. Um, and so uh, ended up going to work at a CPS. And I... Because I had been there, because I had my own personal experience, I was going to do the work a certain way. Mm -hmm. So I would go in early. I would stay late. Um, There was a thing that that we used to have where you could uh, come in during the day and then you could stay and do this night PM assessment kind of thing is what they would call it. So um, from from nine to five, I would be in the daytime part of the job and doing the CPS work. And then at five, I would leave and go upstairs and do the nighttime. And sometimes I'd sleep in the office and wake up and start all again because I wanted to do the work a certain way. Mm -hmm. And you could not convince me that I was not going to save all the kids. Like that was my thing. And so month after month, year after year, you, you pouring yourself into it. And I was an investigator, Mm -hmm. which meant I would go out and investigate. So I would often knock on the doors and go into the places. And uh, on occasion, I'd have to remove kids. Mm -hmm. And um, I had always committed to myself that I would never leave a kid in a place that I didn't feel comfortable with. And so uh, I was the type I'd go out and I'd uh, have to remove a kid and I'd go to a foster home and a it didn't feel right to me. I'd call my folks and say, help, you need to find me another foster home. I got to take your kids somewhere else. Gotcha. 
and uh, did that, did that, months and months, years and years went on, and I remember the day I uh, took a kid, I remember his name, I remember what he looks like, uh, take him to this house, foster home, and I didn't feel good about it. It, wa- it, it wasn't a good match, and I already knew it, but I left the kid anyway, mm-hmm. and it was at that moment that I realized I'd hit this place of I was burned out and jaded and I'd seen mm. too many of them. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And I knew that if that could happen to me, because mm-hmm. I had been there, and you remember, I'm saving all the kids, that's what I'm doing, right. mm-hmm. that it could happen to anybody. Right. And it, it kind of got me into this reframed space of where I asked myself one day, you know, if I really, really want to um, help these kids and families, maybe I should focus on the people working with them. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should focus on trying to ensure that those folks are well and are taking care of themselves and are not burned out and are not jaded. And that's really what kind of put me on this whole path to this self-care thing. I've been, uh, I always say, I joke, I'm a foster care child welfare researcher. That's what Mm -hmm. I do. That's what I write about. And I kind of got into this self-care stuff, and I've been trying to run away from it ever since. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> but I can't because you, you see and you realize it, it's the thing that transcends all the spaces. Yeah. Um, if you are not well, I don't care what you tell yourself. Mm-hmm. If you are not well, um, you are not giving the best of yourself mm-hmm. to anybody or anything. Mm-hmm. And so um, if we can get to a space where we're focused on our uh, teachers or our social workers or our nurses or whoever it may be, and we're ensuring that they feel good about what they're doing, they're supported in what they're doing, Mm -hmm. uh, then they'll be able to do good work. Good deal. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break. That's a great segue into some self-care for ourselves. You are listening to Look Who's Talking. We'll be right back. This past year has highlighted the strength of Community Action Council. Every day, our staff works together to help families recover from this crisis. We're educating children at home and in person, helping parents who lost their jobs, and helping households avoid eviction. Our work at Community Action Council has never been more important than it is right now. So why not join us? We have employment opportunities requiring a range of skills from entry level to advanced. Apply online at commaction.com. Community Action Council's Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program opens on Monday, November 6, 2023. Appointments can be made online beginning October 30th. Please visit our website, comaction.org, and select Apply Here under Utility Assistance Scheduler to make your appointment. Households wishing to make their appointment by phone can dial 859 859- 300-6960. Dial 859-300-6960. Community Action Council's Prep Academies have openings in their early Head Start program for children aged 6 weeks to 3 years old. Spaces are filling up, so now is the time to apply for the upcoming school year. Every child who enrolls receives a full scholarship for the entire school year. To get connected and ensure your young child gets a head start on their education, call Community Action Council at 859-233-4600. You can also find Community Action Council online at comaction.org. That's C-O-M-M action dot O-R-G. listening to look who's talking and we are talking with um uk college of social worker dean um mr dr j miller there it is thank you thank you <laughs> happy to be here so we're going to talk about some different things that are going to help us not get burned out now you uh talked about cps and, mm-hmm. and a lot of things that we do 
uh, work with families and work with those same type of things where we're looking at and seeing things that we may need to deal with and we don't want to miss yeah. out we don't want to get burned out mm -hmm. so man help us out <laughs> <laughs> right well uh yeah you know what because it's the, trauma well yeah and i think that the most important thing to understand kind of the starting point in all this is kind of realizing and recognizing that those in uh, helping professions is kind of right. how we term it this umbrella yeah. term that that encapsulates all these folks you're talking about um are at increased risk for things like burnout mm -hmm. and vicarious trauma and Absolutely. stress and you start thinking well well, why would that be? Uh, well, for a lot of different reasons. Number one, you're dealing with things every single day, um, and you're in these spaces where you you kind of experience this vicarious trauma, where you take on the trauma yeah. of, of of kids that you may deal with or parent situations that you may deal with. Um, there's there's the stress. We know that a lot of social service education spaces uh, they're strapped, they're strained. Mm -hmm. uh, the resources aren't always there. You're trying to make do. Um, and in the helping professions, uh, you know, we, we're kind of socialized to think that way. Yeah. Um, I remember out of out of school um, before going to the week before I went to go work in the CPS space, I, I called myself uh, taking this job at at a, at a private child welfare agency. And uh, again, I worked about four days, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> that's why I kind of skip over it. it was about four days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I go in there on day one and, you know, again, I got my mission. I'm saving these kids and uh, I'm working and I'm working. I'm putting in these new processes and all these things. Day two, I'm working. I'm putting in these new processes and all these things. Day three, same thing. And so I go to my supervisor mm -hmm. and I say, ma'am, uh, I need a raise. <laughs> I like it. I mean, what? Now, now, again, <laughs> green, right? Like fresh out of school, going in there talking about I need a raise. But uh, <laughs> I did. And uh, she looked at me as clear as day. And she said, uh, honey, you don't need a raise. You're doing God's work. Go! <laughs> and that's what we're socialized to, to think that, yes. well, well, you'll get yours later. You're doing good work. Yeah. Uh, but you can't eat good work. Right. Mm -hmm. Good work doesn't always doesn't always pay bills. And so, you know, we we are putting these spaces where we gotta uh, make do, or at least we think that we do. Mm -hmm. And there's a value placed on the work sometimes, uh, or lack of value. Mm -hmm. And all those things, you know, kind of singularly and collectively contribute to what can be a very um, stressful, difficult work environment. Right. And so, because helping professionals are at this increased risk, uh, we have to be more in tune with the concept of uh, self-care and then understand how it impacts our work, right. uh, if we are engaging in it or not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, help us out. What, what, what are some, okay, here's a question I have. Mm -hmm. What are some signs of burnout? Well, okay, so... Um, there are all kinds of, of, of signs and symptoms. Let's go. Have you uh, have you ever been around somebody so long that they yawn and you get mad, <laughs> 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 or like okay. they breathe hard and like, why are you breathing so hard? Right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, or I didn't know that that there was a thing where people like walk hard. Uh, you know, where you hear it, <laughs> you're it, speaking Jesus. <laughs> 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 Where and when he sings, break up with him. <laughs> <laughs> break up. Uh, I hear you chewing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you and and you look around like, well, it, 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 you shouldn't be that mad, maybe, but <laughs> <laughs> right. So you're in these spaces where you you're highly agitated. You don't think about the work the mm -hmm. same. You don't you don't care the same. There are physical symptoms. Mm -hmm. uh, you look tired. You feel tired. Uh, mm -hmm. You're irritable. Um, and a lot of times you think uh, nobody knows or you think yeah. you can, you, you know, you, your mission, your mission driven, your mission right, driven. Right. So it's all about everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I need to help everybody else. Um, so, you know, uh, understanding when you get to a space where uh, you don't think about the work the same way or, you know, I always say you need some critical friends and you like you need some some keep it real friends mm -hmm. yeah so that uh folks can know like if, if you see me struggling right, right. uh helping me realize that mm -hmm. because again we're socialized to be these uh um 
I cannot stand this concept of uh, superheroes. Yeah. Right, right. No, we, we're not. We're, we're human, like everybody right, else. Absolutely. Right. Uh, if I see another sign, I hope y'all don't have any here. Uh, when <laughs> uh, heroes work here. <laughs> um, it, again, it, it goes back to this socialization that we should just put up mm -hmm. uh, and deal with stuff. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, you you see the burnout, uh, compassion fatigue, the, the, the vicarious trauma, the stress, um, all of these uh, emotional indicators, these behavioral indicators, physical indicators. Um, you know, they all they all look similar. And I think a lot of times we can convince ourselves that mm -hmm. we're not there mm. um, or we feel guilty about being there yeah, yeah. um th the second step once you kind of realize um you know the importance of why you need to to, to deal with self-care and engage in self-care is understanding that it is complex mm -hmm. um we see all these things we live in this um consumeristic self-care society where um, we see all these things that make us think if I go buy that thing, I'm going to be self-cared up. Mm -hmm. um, and it, self care is complex. Mm -hmm. it, it's a, it's a science. There's many nuances to it. And if we're fooled into thinking it's simple, um, we're just fooled. Right. Um, right. And so once you recognize the burnout piece, it's kind of this, this three step process where, all right, number one, you got to kind of grapple with, uh, what self-care is, mm -hmm. right? And everywhere I go, people ask me, well, can't you just tell me what to do for self-care? Mm -hmm. And I say, no, I can't. Um, self-care is about how to do, not what to do. Oh, okay. And uh, for example, if um, you go to the gym, mm -hmm. you CrossFit, I lift weights. You do. <laughs> <laughs> See how she changed that? Uh -huh. I lift weights. What's what? Up? It, you get into spaces where if if I say lifting weights is self-care. Yeah. And I say, do you lift weights? And you say no. And I say, you don't practice self-care. That's that's not quite true. Right. Okay. Lifting weights is a self-care practice. Yeah. Mindfulness is a self-care practice. Mm -hmm. Yoga is a self-care practice. And so the first thing you have to realize, it's called self-care for a reason. There's right. a subjective self there. And only you can define what your self-care is. Uh, so if, if uh, going to the gym, if that's not your thing, then, then you read a book. Mm -hmm. Reading reading's not your thing, then you guard. You know, you got to kind of uh, feel around and find what's for you and what's going to work uh, for right. your self-care. You cannot let someone else define it for you. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's often a challenge at a lot of um, organizations where – that's we cool. roll out a wellness. We give you, you know, right. here, here's a gym membership and this and that. Um, I had a lady one time. She lived in eastern Kentucky. She said, do you know how far I have to drive to get to a gym? <laughs> like, that, that was not health care. Um, that was not self-care to her at all. Yeah. So, um, you know, understanding, recognizing that no one can define your self-care but you. Right. Um, so it is whatever you say it is. Mm -hmm. Now, you do have to be careful. There's a thing I call pernicious practices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because it sues you does not make it self care. Come on. Uh, we we well, again we get into these spaces where, like, oh that that felt good. Yeah, it did for that moment, but mm -hmm. it is not self care. Um, Absolutely. You got folks. Uh, you do uh, Amazon. You order stuff off Amazon Prime. Remember y'all yeah, do that? Yeah. Okay. You know, you pull up to your house and you see these Amazon packages, but you don't remember what they are. Mm. <laughs> you probably didn't need those, right? Like, uh, they got that, what do they, they call it? There's a term, um, uh, retail therapy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all good that. if you got money in your account. Yeah. Come on. Right? That's all good. But I practice, getting to <laughs> I practice food therapy. How about that? Well, and again, that, yeah. that, like, that could be great um, unless you're eating a certain kind of food every right. day, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, and the mind is a powerful thing. It will fool you into yeah. thinking that that's good for me. Relationships. Mm -hmm. Some folks are in relationships that, that that's not good for you. D right. That soothes you, but do not mistake Sad that for that. being your self-care. Yeah. So we got to understand that there are pernicious practices that you just kind of got to work yourself out of. Yeah. Uh, d just because it makes you feel good doesn't mean you should keep uh, doing it. Yeah. So recognizing what self-care is and, and what it isn't. Uh, number two, get into a spot where you're planful. Um, you know, on, on the opening, I know you all were talking about uh, uh, New Year's resolutions, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, and I, 
They're Thank goals, you. not resolutions. Goals, resolutions. <laughs> we, uh, I, I, I hear you. Uh, what I, what I would say is, we don't need to wait for the new year, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, and again, we get back to the mind. Like, how many times? All right, January rolls around. You get your plan. You sit down. You go to that mirror in your bedroom. You say, "This year, I'm doing this and this and this," and mm-hmm. you are motivated. In February, you're a little shaky, <laughs> but you go and you say, "I'm doing this and this and this." Yeah. And then March comes, you're like, oh, forget it, I'm going to do it next year, mm. right? Like, so getting into understanding that self-care is not this ancillary, secondary thing. Mm-hmm. It has to be uh, embedded. It's, it's, it's a way of being in the world. So it's, it's everything you do from parking a little further to walk in to yeah. taking your breaks. Um, there was a, an organization I worked with, and a guy, he would uh, – take his truck and pull it around and just kind of park it out and look over a field mm-hmm. uh, two times a day for 15 minutes every single time. And we thought it was the craziest thing for him to do that. But that is what kept him going, and that was his oh, wow. self-care. And he had a plan to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, far too many times we get in these spots, and because we don't have critical friends, we end up with these very unrealistic plans. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I work with folks, and they'll put together a self-care plan, and it'll say, um, I'm going to run a marathon this year. And I'm like, great, I'm a runner. That sounds awesome. Um, when is this marathon? Like, mm-hmm. Oh, it's next month. All right, uh, do you run now? Nope. Mm. Have you ever ran before? <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, then, no, we're not going to do this. Like, we, I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> we, we got to work this through. So uh, we were talking about words uh, earlier, mm-hmm. word for the year. Uh, uh, my word this year is incrementalism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Meaning, we don't need to take it all at one time. That's right. We're going we to pace it down. We're going to walk into a realistic plan. Mm-hmm. So if, go, if going to the gym is part of your plan, maybe you need to have a gym membership to do that. Right? right? Like, we got right. to plan this thing out. <laughs> so once you get your plan, you got to have your evaluation assessment and your critical friends. Your friends, mm-hmm. I always say, you have to have somebody who tells you what it is and somebody who tells you what it ain't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I know my head start, but I don't want uh, <laughs> <you know, I laughs> to. I don't want to offend anybody. But ain't is a powerful word, so you got to know what I it use ain't. ain't. <laughs> I heard ain't all the time. I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> I bet you will. Uh, but. <laughs> but but you know that assessment piece, like understanding what's not working for mm-hmm. you. Um, understanding that, you know, self-care is a place where you got to, you got to poke around and try and, and, and feel and see, you know, what feels good, what works, what's sustainable. Um, I have a question. Yeah. So, you know, I'm thinking in my head, I'm, I'm thinking about burnout revival. Either you're going to, um, do self-care and you're going to be revived back to the point where, Hey, this is where I want to be. But there are times where people, how can a person identify, you know, through burnout, is this for me? Is what? Uh, like, say, suffer- say. The activity? A job or. Oh, okay. So, so I, I think, number one, let's, let's, I say self-care is both prevention and intervention. Uh-huh. You ever wonder, like, why does something have to be wrong before we decide to take some action? Like, maybe if we took the yeah. action before, the thing would have never been wrong. Exactly. So it's it's almost uh, self-care helps you build up these protective factors mm-hmm. um, that will allow you to manage in spaces that might not be ideal. Um, organizational wellness and self-care are two different things. Now, self-care is not something that helps you put up with a bad workspace, right? Got gotcha. you. Um, you those you you can't let someone else tell you how you're going to take care of you Mm -hmm. and far too many times what tends to happen is people think that um wellness is the organization's responsibility to bestow upon me Mm -hmm. good luck waiting for that to happen in some places right right? Right. so knowing that you control what you control Mm -hmm. and it doesn't excuse organizations yes organizations should be intentional they should be explicit about the care of their employees, period, full stop. Mm-hmm. But while that ha- is happening, <laughs> you need to be mindful of uh, your self-care and view it as prevention. So if you, if you have a tricky work situation, self-care can help you deal with that. Mm-hmm. And intervention, uh, once something happens, I can respond differently and that can be self-care. And sometimes self-care is realizing that that job isn't for me. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't vibe with that supervisor in the way I thought I need to do something different. And that is perfectly fine. Right. Um, so getting to a spot where, again, we have to realize that it's not always about what we do. Sometimes it's about what we choose to not do. 
yeah. or where we choose to not be. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Dr. J, it's, time went by quick. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, you, I'm up you here spit like, knowledge oh, over there. I'm all spinning now. Right. What else you got? <laughs> <laughs> but Dr. J, we're so glad that you were here on the show today. We really Thanks appreciate it. We're going to have to get you back. back. Indeed, yeah. Indeed. Y'all, yeah. y'all got a fun situation. I, would, I just want to hang out over here all the time. There Come you on. go. Come, Come on, on over in the hood. <laughs> 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 all right. You are listening to Look Who's Talking. Tell a friend. Share the show. We'll be back when we're back. Thank you.